So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to paint this watermelon popsicle. This is a great project for beginners, and I'll explain some key blending tricks to get effects like this. As always, I'll list the brushes I'm using in the description below. And to start, I'm going to create a very rough background wash. And for the brush, I'll use the abstract round. I'll use a kind of medium watermelon tone. Not something pure red though, you could if you want to, but I like it to be a little bit purple. I'll use the brush at a pretty large size, and I'll do my best to create a very rough wash. So sometimes I'm pressing soft, and sometimes I'm pressing hard. I just want this to be as interesting as possible. And this popsicle is composed of layers, and you could paint the different colors on, but I think it's easier to just define them with the selection tool. So for that, I'll grab the selection tool and set it to freehand, and I'll kind of define the cream layer first. So I'll just make a selection here like that, hue saturation and brightness and I'll adjust the brightness and the saturation and the hue and try to find this color there we go after that I'll grab the selection tool again and use the same technique to define the green area down here and just to make it a little bit more interesting I'll make a selection like this in the green area I'll feather it out and I'll kind of insert a slightly darker green tone in there. And once our main colors are kind of layered out like this, we can move on and do the blending. And there's gonna be kind of two stages of blending. So for the brush, I'm gonna use the water blender. And the first stage here is, I'll use the brush at a pretty large size, and I'll make the transition between the cream and the red super rough and interesting like this. And then for the transition here, I'll shrink my brush size and just slightly rough it up. Now this area here, uh, it might get trimmed out when we create the final shape, but I think since I have the blender selected, I'll just pull this green out just to kind of fill in this gap. And there's one more blending trick that I wanna show you, but it's totally optional. It could be a little bit too technical if you're a beginner, but I wanna show you how to give this a very watery kind of blending texture. So for that, I need to isolate it. So I'm gonna grab the freehand selection tool and I'll just select and isolate the area I wanna blend. That's just the transition between the cream and the uh, red part. I'll feather up this selection, you know, maybe around 10%, uh, but not too much. Then I'll go to my adjustments, liquify, I'll set it to crystals and I'll use it at a really big size and I'll just scribble this around and you can kind of see what's happening here. As I said, it's an optional trick, but I think it looks really good on a simple illustration like a popsicle. And once you're finished, you can just tap on the selection tool to leave that mode. And once the blending is finished, we can finally cut this out into a popsicle shape. So for that, I'll grab the eraser brush, which I've set to the fine liner pen, and I'll just do my best to rough out the shape and erase the excess. And this turned out pretty good, but I think it's a little bit too short. So I'm gonna use the arrow tool to stretch it out. Next, we can move on and add the seed texture down here in the green area. Now the reason it has seeds is of course because it's just a blended kiwi. So to get that effect, I'll make a layer above the popsicle. I'll choose a pretty dark green tone like this, fine liner pen, and I'll just dot on a bunch of random seeds like this. And I want these seeds to look like they're sort of uh, deeper inside the popsicle and I think the best way to do that is with Gaussian Blur. So I'll go to my adjustments and apply a Gaussian Blur to all those seeds and I'll blur them quite a bit. There we go. After that I'll set this layer to multiply and I'll lower it so they're just barely visible. After that I'll make another layer and I'll do basically another layer of seeds. So again fine liner pen and I'll just do some random dots. And this time I'll blur them as well, but just a little bit less than last time. And just like before, I'll set the layer to multiply and lighten it. And all this is just to create a sort of sense of depth here. Now for the final layer of seeds, I'm not gonna blur them at all. I'll just dot them on just randomly like this. And these will be the ones that are basically on the surface. And I think this turned out pretty good. You could definitely go back and sort of adjust these layers and change the transparency, but this looks good enough. So I'm gonna pinch it and merge everything together onto one layer. 
Next, I'm gonna move on and paint the kind of the slots or the flutes in the popsicle. And this is just a sort of indentation on the surface that comes from the mold. So for those, I'll make a blank layer above the popsicle. I'll choose a pretty saturated red tone. And I'm choosing red because this is sort of a red tone and it's like the main color of the popsicle. For the brush, I'll use the fine liner pen, about like that size, and I'll just rough out a U shape like this. After that, I'll grab the water blender and I'll use it to kind of soften just the inside here. It's okay if I go off the edge once in a while, but I'm generally gonna stay inside. And this looks pretty good. It's very inconsistent, but I did this on purpose just because I wanna make it more interesting. Now, once it's finished like that, I'm gonna change the transparency mode to multiply, and then I'll lower it just so it's barely visible. When we're zoomed in like this, it might not be very obvious, but if you zoom out, it's just kind of a faint uh, shadow and it doesn't need to be too strong. After that, I'll duplicate it, and I'll just use the arrow tool to move the duplicate over. And just so they don't look exactly the same, I'm gonna use the warp tool to kind of bend it. I think I'll also warp the original one to make it a little bit narrower. There we go. After that, I'll merge these uh, kind of flutes here together onto one layer. And I need to fix this issue down here. Basically, this is a red color and it blends very nicely with the red up here, but I need to shift it down here to something else. And I think the best way to do that is with the selection tool. So I'll grab the selection tool, set to freehand, and I'll just select where these uh, flutes overlap with the white area. There we go. Then I'll circle back. I'll feather it out to soften the edges of that selection. Hue saturation and brightness. And I wanna try to match the color of just the area we selected, kind of more closely to the cream. So I think I'll brighten it, desaturate it, and then shift the color a little bit towards yellow. There we go, I think that looks a lot better. Then I'll make another selection just covering the green area. I'll feather it out. And this time I'll kind of darken it back saturate it and shift it towards green. And again, the whole point of this is I just want the flutes to kind of have a similar color as what they're above on the popsicle. So depending on your popsicle, you'll have to make different adjustments. Now up here, obviously we just need to erase that. And once I'm happy with how the flutes look, I'll just merge them together with the popsicle. Now this next part is optional, but I wanna add a sort of frosty highlight just on the left side of each flute. So that'll be on its own blank layer. I'll choose pure white, and I wanna do this with a charcoal brush, just because it has a nice texture. And I'm painting here, but I just want the edge of the charcoal to catch the edge of the flute. There we go. Then I'll grab the eraser, and erase uh, all of this charcoal brush just from inside of the flute, where I don't want it to show up. And the point of this is just to get a little bit of that charcoal brush on the edge of the flute, so it has a sort of frosty, chilled effect. Next, I can move on and finally add the popsicle stick. And that's super easy. I'll just make another blank layer. I'll choose a kind of yellowy khaki color like this. We can always adjust it later. For the brush, I'll go back to the watercolor kit and use the abstract round. And I wanna create this really interesting kind of up and down wash texture like this. This is just to sort of simulate wood grain. Then I can grab the arrow tool, set to freeform and I can squish it to make it closer together. After that, I just need to use the eraser brush to refine the final shape. And the texture on this is a little bit too bold for my taste, so I'm gonna blend it using the water blender. And it's optional, but if you want to, you can add some simple shadows on the popsicle stick. So for that, I'm gonna grab the freehand selection tool I'll just select up here and then a little bit along the edge just to give it a sense of thickness. I'll circle back, hue saturation and brightness, and I'll just darken those areas a little bit. And at this point, the popsicle could be done, but there's one last trick I wanna show you that'll really enhance the watercolor effect, and it's called selection blending. So in order to do this, we have to merge everything together onto one layer. Then we can grab the selection tool, set to freehand, and I'll create a selection that just sort of randomly tunnels uh, through the popsicle like this. 
I just want to isolate some narrow areas like this. Then I'll reconnect it. I'll feather out this selection around 15%. You don't want to feather it out too much or this won't work. Then I'll go to my adjustments, Gaussian blur, and this will let me just blur that kind of random area we selected. And this blending trick did make some of the seeds disappear down here, but we can just add them back. And just like that, this popsicle is finished. I think this particular one was pretty complicated with all the layering, so I think if you can paint this one, you'll have no problem painting pretty much any other popsicle. If you're painting a collection like this, don't forget that all the popsicles don't have to be complex, and it looks really nice if you add in a few simple ones. As always, if you think I've earned it, please give this video a like, and if you wanna learn how to make collections of your Procreate artwork and how to put them in a shadow box, I think you might love to watch either the bird or butterfly tutorial next.